Okay guys, in this video segment we're going to talk about buffers and how buffers work. Uh, first thing we need to know about buffers is we need to realize that buffers really are a throwback to our last unit which is equilibrium type of stuff and that buffers really apply all of, the, uh, of oh excuse me, uh, buffers really apply all of the Chatelier's principles in terms of how they work in terms of a solution. Okay, So what a buffer basically does is this. It is something that is able to resist the pH change. So it has to be a combination of chemicals that if you add an acid into it, it will not allow it to add hydrogen ions. Or if you add a base into it, it does not allow you to add hydroxide ions in there. So what it does is it actually is, has to have the ability to absorb H plus or release H plus depending on what you put with it. Okay. Um, now, we have two different types of buffers. We have an acid buffer, and acid buffers are always made by taking a weak acid and its conjugate base, which is typically one of its a salt of some sort that goes with it. Okay, So we talked earlier in the unit about acids and their conjugates. So if you take a weak acid, let's say acetic acid, and then you take uh, sodium acetate, uh, its conjugate base. So if we take acetic acid, And let's say we use, I don't know, 100 grams of this stuff. And then we take sodium acetate, okay? And we put 100 grams of that into solution, okay? If we do that for both of these things, what we have is the acid right here, which is a weak acid, and we have the acetate ion, which is its conjugate. So in that scenario, we actually would create a buffer or we create a solution that is able to resist pH changes. Okay. Now, if you want your buffer to be at a pH that's basic, so a pH is above 7, you do the exact same idea, but you use a weak base with its conjugate instead. Okay. So if you're looking to buffer a solution here, um, you use weak acid with conjugate base. If you want a, a buffer that is more than... Uh, let's say seven, you use a weak base with a conjugate acid. Okay. Now, chemists use buffers in different scenarios trying to keep our pH the same so we can run experiments so we can maintain a certain pH. Our body uses buffers constantly um, to maintain pH in certain areas. So like our stomach acid, our bloodstreams, inside our cells, uh, different areas are using different types of buffers to actually keep a pH very regulated. Okay, Our blood it actually has two or three different buffers in it to help maintain a very specific pH what's, in, what's inside there. So without this idea of buffers, we'd have a problem. I think last year you guys did actually a lab on this in Honors Biology where you actually ground up liver. And yeah, and ground up liver in there actually creates a buffer scenario where you actually could, could buffer an acid in and out. Uh, if you guys recall that, it was probably one of those really fun labs you guys did last year in bio. So, um, what we're going to take a look now is this applet that kind of brings us back to the Shotley Ace principle and kind of how this all works. So, if we jump out and go here. A buffer is an aqueous solution containing both a weak acid and a weak base that are a conjugate acid base pair. The buffer shown contains the weak acid, acetic acid, and its conjugate base, acetate. These species are dissolved in water. Water molecules are not shown in this animation to draw focus to the buffer components. A buffer solution has the ability to resist changes in pH upon the addition of small amounts of either acid or base. Choose to add a strong acid or a strong base to the buffer by clicking one of the buttons. Okay, so we're going to take this thing and we're going to add a strong acid to it. So if you notice, right now we have concentration of two different things in solution. Um, and very much like the Le Chatelier applet that we use, if I add a strong acid in, I'm going to be adding in a whole bunch of H+. So what's going to happen is, is these two different dissolved particles are going to adjust or compensate for that stress to try to balance out the system again. Only hydrogen ions, H+, from the hydrochloric acid are shown entering the solution. Chloride is not shown because it is a spectator ion. It does not participate in the reaction. The strong acid, H+, reacts with the base component of the buffer acetate, CH3COO-, reducing the acid component of the buffer acetic acid, CH3COOH. The buffer has resisted a change in pH by removing strong acid, H+, from the solution. Okay, so we look, we put the hydrogen in, and that created a uh, stress. So it then combined with the acetate ion and made more acetic acid. But remember, acetic acid 
is a weak acid, which means most of it is going to stay together in solution. It's not going to have these H's break apart. So notice how they're floating around in here. Those H's are, those little white H's are attached there. So these H's here can't contribute to the H plus concentration because they're still bound in this chemical. Okay, so by adding acid, we basically are using up some of this to make more of that, and neither one of these are actually H pluses. Okay, now at some point we actually could break this buffer, right? If I keep adding more and more hydrochloric acid in, this is going to keep going down and down and down and down. But as soon as we run out of acetate ion, we now have broken the buffer. Okay, um, and then in that case, it's kind of like breaking an equilibrium where we no longer have any of this available to be in a buffering scenario. So that from then on out, the pH could drastically changed by adding a little bit of uh, hydrogen ions in there. Let's flip the scenario now and add a strong base instead. Only hydroxide ions, OH minus, from the strong base sodium hydroxide are shown entering the solution. Sodium ions are not shown because they are spectator ions. They do not participate in the reaction. The strong base hydroxide, OH minus, reacts with the acid component of the buffer, acetic acid, CH3COOH reducing the base component of the buffer acetate, CH3COO- and water. This buffer has resisted a change in pH by removing the strong base hydroxide from the solution. Okay, and not surprisingly, the exact opposite happens here. We put hydroxide in that stresses the system, and the hydroxide actually steals these hydrogens off of here, which makes more acetate ion but then also reduces its back down so that it is gone. So we don't get a change in pH in that direction either. Okay? So the key here is you have to have the weak acid or base and its conjugate in there okay, um, to make this system happen. So let's go back down to our PowerPoint. And if we take a look, um, we have one more video for you guys to take a look at. When adding a strong acid to a buffer, the acid first ionizes in the aqueous solution. As hydronium ions are added to the buffer, the equilibrium shifts left according to Le Chatelier's principle. Initially, in this acetic acid acetate buffer, there is a new acetic acid molecule formed for nearly every hydronium added to the solution. As the added hydronium ions react with acetate ions, equilibrium between acetic acid and acetate ions is re-established. Only a very small amount of acetic acid ionizes to form acetate ions and new hydronium ions. The animation illustrates this process. Here, a hydrogen chloride molecule ionizes in water. The resulting hydronium ion reacts with an acetate ion forming acetic acid. Due to the small Ka of acetic acid, very few acetic acid molecules ionize to form acetate and hydronium ions. All right, so basically what they're saying is that this thing does not allow those hydrogen ions to be separate from them, so they're not free to be in solution. They're bound in there because of its small Ka value, okay? Now, working with buffers is kind of an important part of chemistry because if you need to do a reaction at a very specific pH, you need to make a buffer solution to run the chemistry in, okay? Um, the trick is, how do you make a solution at the pH that you want to work with, okay? So there is a way that we can mathematically solve for the right pH of a buffer solution. Now, this is not perfect, okay? Uh, the equation I'm using up here, showing you guys, is a simplified version of something called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is a little bit more complex, works in all conditions. Uh, this is a simplified way of using just the stuff we've already set up. It works for the most part. Um, it does fall apart if you have very low concentration um, because then self-ionization of water kind of plays a role. And it also doesn't work very well if you're using strong acids or strong bases in your buffers, which isn't very common. But if you're trying to get a buffer at extremely low pH, like a pH of less than 1 or a pH almost at 14, the only way you can do that is use strong acids and strong bases. So these are very kind of uncommon scenarios that we work with. All right. So uh, here's what we have. We know that if you take your Ka value and you have a weak acid, the H HA, this is kind of a generic way of saying an acid that is weak, you have hydrogen ions that are products and you have the conjugate base that's a product. Because Ka's here are going to be small, less than one, these are going to be reactant favored, so most of the stuff stays in its non-ionized form right here. Okay, So this equation uh, if we rearrange it, we can say that the H plus now is equal to the Ka um, 
times the H A over A minus. So just taking this and rearranging it for H plus. Well, we also know that the pH is equal to the negative log of H plus. So if we can solve for H plus using this equation and then plug that into our pH equation, we should be able to solve for it. And if you look, H A, this is your weak acid, and A minus is your conjugate. Okay, So if you know the concentration of your acid and the, and the concentration of your conjugate, you can solve for the pH of that buffer solution. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a problem, and I'm just going to run through it to kind of see how this happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, 100 milliliters of 0.25 molar benzoic acid. And I'm going to just label that BA for benzoic acid. And then I'm going to use 100 milliliters of 0.25 molar benzoate, benzoate ions. Okay, so here's my acid. Here's my conjugate base in this scenario. Okay, so knowing these two things, I have 100 milliliters of 0.25 molar benzoic acid. I have 100 milliliters of 0.25 molar um, benzoate ion. Let's create our um, pH here. Okay, so if I put the two things together, I actually have a total of 200 milliliters. So at 200 milliliters, that means my concentrations for each of these things actually get cut in half. Okay. Now, because I use the same volume for each of these things, the nice thing about that is um, using equal volumes actually makes it so I don't have to cut them in half because uh, the ratio comes out the same. But just for our purposes, just in case we don't use equal volume, let's make sure we do the math properly here. Okay. So if I end up with 200 milliliters, now my benzoic acid actually has a new concentration of 0.125, or basically half that concentration I had before because I've doubled my volume. And my benzoate ion, we'll just call it B minus, uh, because it's basically the ion or the negative or the conjugate of this, my um, benzoate ion also would have a concentration of 0.125 molar. Okay, And now we set up our equation. So we know that the H plus concentration is going to be equal to the Ka, and the Ka for uh, benzoic acid happens to be 1.2 times 10 to negative 2. So that's our Ka value. Okay, That you have to look up on a table, so that's what we have. Uh, that value, oh, what did I just do? Let me close that. There we go. Um, that value now, we want to set that and take it times the concentration of our acid. So that's going to be the benzoic acid is going to go in here. So that's a 0.125 divided by the concentration of our conjugate, which is right here. So that's also 0.125 molar. Okay, That should give us my H plus concentration. So if I do that, plug into the old trusty dumb calculator, I have 0.125 divided by 0.125, which happens to be 1. Take that times 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. 1 times anything by itself is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. All right, so now, after we do this math, we find out the H plus concentration is equal to basically 1.2 times 10 to negative 2. That only works out, these numbers are only the same because we happen to have the same concentration here and here and the same volumes here and here. Okay, so this is a simplified version of this problem. Keep in mind that most of the time, for a practice problem, you're probably not going to have equal concentrations and maybe not equal volumes, so you need to do a little bit more work with your math. Okay. Now, I also know that my pH okay, is equal to the negative log of my H plus concentration. So, I can find out my pH now by taking the negative log of 1.2 times 10 to negative 2. Okay, so if I take the negative log of that, I get a pH of 1.92. Oh, sorry, yeah, 1.92. So if I'm looking to buffer a solution somewhere close to a pH of 2, or maybe 1.9-ish, someplace in that range, this would be a good buffer scenario to put together. Okay. Now, if I wanted my pH of my buffer to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower, what I could do is I could go in here and I could mess with maybe I use more concentrated acid or maybe I use more concentrated 
of my um, conjugate base, and I can adjust these ratios to bring my pH up and down a little bit as I need to. So if I want a pH that's closer, let's say, to 1.5, okay, ultimately what I want here is I want this value here to be a little bit less so I can change the concentration accordingly, okay? Now, that's a pretty simple little practice problem for this. Uh, your practice sheet takes you through um, an additional problem right here using sodium acetate and acetic acid, and then one more problem also, okay? So we're done with the video here. Uh, that's buffers. Um, you had the practice sheet to work on, and you have a buffer lab to do with this also to give you some more practice, right? Thank you.